Good evening, Bridgeport. Thanks for coming out. Quite a crowd today. I know everyone's excited for a couple of fun things we have on the agenda today. This is our 736. Uh, it's, a, it's 736. We are called to order. Please rise and fledge back. Thank you. Angela, roll call, please. Laura Houck. Here. Amy High. Here. Kyle Shank. Here. Megan Nolan. Here. Diane Gundrum. Here. Tony Heil. Here. Sabah Al Zayed. Here. Madam President, I note for the record that we were in executive session from approximately 6.45 to approximately 7.36 with regard to real estate issues as well as personnel issues. Thank you, Mr. Bellow. All right. First up on the agenda for council consideration, we have our August 2024 20, meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Heil. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion for Mr. Heil, a second for Mr. Shank. Do we have any comments or questions from council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Sorry, everyone, it sounds like someone's at the door. We should see who it is. <laughs> Looks like we have some <laughs> visitors, everyone. <laughs> Hello, if you'd like to uh, be seated. We're currently in a council meeting. I don't know if everyone wants to take a seat. All right, looks like we have some uh, spooky visitors. <laughs> we require some order, everyone, order. I need everyone to be, please be seated. This is an official council meeting. Order. <laughs> Could everyone please be seated so we could finish up our uh, council meeting? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Sir, would you like to speak? We're going to have to move along with our agenda. Is it adjacent up front? Would all the monsters like to join your leader so that we could hear from all of you? OK, please state your name and address, please, for the record. We are the monsters of Bridgeport. We have been in the darkness for over 300 years. It is time that this borough honors us and gives us the right to have a month for ourselves. This you will do if you do not, when you are lying in your beds at night when you hear the twigs snapping outside, when you see the crack door of your closet, the rustling underneath your bed, and the shadows in the trees, that will be us coming for you. So we ask this council, will you honor 
our request. Council, do we have any thoughts about our uh, current residents? I mean, they've been here a lot longer than I have, but I like what they have to say. I mean, they're not wrong. I feel like we probably should give them the respect that they deserve as a longtime resident. So, so what would you like us to do? Would you like us to do something specifically for a specific month to honor your specific request? We want a new name. A name appropriate for the monsters that have lived here for so long. So, Mr. Monster, luckily for you, Mr. Bellow has prepared a wonderful proclamation for us um, <laughs> in where we uh, naming Bridgeport Booport. Do you think that's appropriate? Do you like that name? Let's you want to gather with the monsters and confirm. Yeah, you guys don't have me. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a vote to me. That will suffice. Fantastic. All right. It shall be Booport. <laughs> so I have the uh, proclamation. I can read it to you if you'd like, and uh, you can let me know if it makes sense. A proclamation of the borough of Bridgeport, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, proclaiming that during the month of October, Bridgeport will be renamed to Booport in honor of the thriving spirit of Halloween in our community. Whereas the month of October is commonly associated with the celebration of Halloween and all things spooky, scary, and creepy. And whereas it's common, it is common knowledge that br the borough of Bridgeport is home to some of the most spirited and festive Halloween nights in the region, thanks to its dedicated residents who decorate amazingly and welcome all to the local, all the local, the local ghouls, goblins, and their doorsteps, as well as a great community group that sponsors and hosts beloved traditions such as the Bridgeport Elks Lodge Haunted House, where you guys came from. And whereas for the 2023 Halloween season and moving forward, the borough of Bridgeport will be home to even more great Halloween activities and events throughout the month of October, with something for every aging group. And whereas the borough of Bridgeport wishes to declare that we we are the destination for fun, fear, and excitement during the Halloween season. Now, therefore, I, Saab al Zaid, as president of the Borough of Bridgeport Council, and on behalf of the entire the entirety of Bridgeport, the Borough of Bridgeport, do hereby an announce that from this point forward, during the month of October, Bridgeport will be officially renamed Booport in order to establish our role as Montgomery County's Halloween Town, USA. I'll be signing it. Here, here. Would, would the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we do need a vote. <laughs> I would like to make the motion to turn at Bridgeport and Sabuport for the month of October from here on out. I'll gladly second. <laughs> we have a motion for Ms. Houck. <laughs> a second for Ms. Gundrum. Do you have any comments or questions from Council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. It's Booport. <laughs> would Council like to take a quick picture with the Elks? Um, monsters? So we can, sh do you want to take a picture quick? Sal actually, Sal actually represented them when they first.
I'd love to thank the uh, our residents, our monster residents, for coming and speaking today. Um, I also want to thank the Elks Lodge for officially collaborating with us. So Booport is a collaboration between the Elks and between Bridgeport Borough. So I think that's fantastic. We're really excited to work with them. They've been fantastic, as you can see, um, in collaborating with us. I do want to remind everyone that they are open September 28th, October 5th, 12th, October 19th, 25th, and 26th as well. All this will be circulated on the website, and we can chat more about it so we can get through our agenda. But I just wanted to honor them and thank them and encourage everybody to visit them as well. All righty, now back to our agenda. Uh, for council consideration, we have a request for Growing Bridgeport Together to utilize the borough facilities for annual festival of lights and holiday village celebration. Um, Mr. Gundam, would you like to say a few words? Yes, good evening, council. Um, John Gundam, Growing Bridgeport Together. Um, thank you again for considering this for this year's uh, holiday shopping village um, over here in the lot. And uh, that's it. Uh, we'll, we'll have our <laughs> holiday tent and everything for the kids' activities. We always love having that. And the Girl Scouts love coming to that and running it. And uh, um, all the vendors and all the people that come out and uh, patronize the various activities that we have going on there. So, Yeah, thanks for all you do. It's a fun event we attend as well, so we appreciate it. Do we have a motion? Uh, what are the hours? And it's the parking lot, right? Okay. It's in the parking lot here, yeah, and it would be in there. Um, it's the official hours are three to seven. If that's the case, I'll make a motion to approve. Before we go to vote, I will recuse from this due to my position on the board at the Grand Bridge Report together. I have a motion for Mr. Heil. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second for Mr. Shake. Do we have any questions or comments from council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. For council consideration, we have a request from the Festive Lights Committee to utilize borough facilities for annual Festive Lights and Halloween Village celebration as well. If you guys would like to come up and share a few words. Peter Cohut, 406 Ford Street, Bridgeport Festive Lights Committee. Uh, again, we're submitting our annual request to utilize the borough garage. The parking lot will be submitting later a request to the mayor to close off Mill Street, as we've done for the past, probably as long as the goblins have been in town, um, to light the borough Christmas tree and welcome the white bearded man who Somebody might say he's a goblin, I don't know, but uh, uh, to town, to Bridgeport, and to kick off the holiday season. It's a little later this year. It's the 30th. Um, again, well, all we're asking is that, you know, the same rules of advertising and cross-marketing be observed as we have in the past, you know, however many years. Um, and again, we're looking forward again annually to doing something that was started I lost count at this point by former mayor and police chief Jerry Nicola. I think it's one of those events that brings the community together. So respectfully, I would request an affirmative vote from council. Thank you. Thank you for that. A great event we attend as well. Do we have a, a motion? So moved. Yep. Uh, one question. If I could, just about the fireworks. Yes. Um, what's the plan for that? Is it going to be up? Once we have everything finalized, the uh, logistics are still being worked out. Uh, I certainly will let yourself and the borough know and whoever needs to be contacted. As we've done in the past, obviously, the borough will be listed as an additional insured. On the certificate of insurance, we're, we're, we're finally some th logistics at this point in time. I'm just not ready to commit to anything, uh, Chief. So again, we, as we do in the past, and you know me, we keep everything transparent and keep everybody informed. Thanks. Okay. Any just other to questions? just to quickly go over kind of what motions are. So motions is to open is to kind of vote in favor. Then the second is to open the floor for discussion. So can we have a motion and second before we start discussing? I had a, I, my, I made a motion. Yeah. Do we have a second? A second. All right. We have a motion from Mr. Shank. A second from um, Ms. Nolan. 
uh, and we can, uh, if we have council questions or comments. Any, are there any concerns with, with approving this this evening before having the, obviously, Mr. Gowan, I, I love the event and want to see it going. Are there, are there any concerns with the approval tonight before we know specifically about the fireworks, just from a legal perspective? I, uh, I'm no lawyer, but I don't. <laughs> but no, I, I, I trust in, uh, I trust that the committee will, uh, they're fully cognizant of, of the distance requirements that are necessary in order to uh, set off the mortar shells and uh, uh, it will be appropriately addressed before, uh, before the event proceeds. If I may, uh, Councilman Shank. I have spoken with the fire chief and reviewed what the, uh, the fire regulations call for with regard to shells and size and things like that. So um, that was part of one of those moving pieces that we're still putting together on exactly what we can do. Thanks. Yeah, as long as there's no concerns from the, uh, the professionals you know, or the administration, yeah, of we're, course. We're, we're looking at this, this point. Um, is to get use of the garage, the roads, as we've done in the past. Uh, and that's primarily what we've gotten approval for historically. Right. I, I assume, Mr. Kohut, that you're implying that once you tell the council where the, the uh, fireworks will be set from, they'll have the ability to review that and approve it as well. Yes. Yes. There, I, and again, we, we stay full transparent. We understand, you know, the insurance requirements as we have in the past for the borough. We understand who needs to be added for uh, additional insured on the COIs. And we understand the, that the fire chief and the fire department and the police are fully aware of everything going on. And obviously, being part of the community, if there is a concern, if there seems to be a problem, we'll make sure it gets addressed so that we can continue uh, this annual event. I have confidence, as always, that you'll work with everybody. You've done it well in the past, and it's a great event. So I certainly I'm, try. I know. I, I <laughs> have every confidence that you will handle it appropriately with new housing. There might be new rules and stuff to go over the police and borough management, but I'm sure you'll do it. So I, I, I hope you have great success. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, Mr. Kohlacott, if you wouldn't mind repeating the, uh, what you had mentioned about the marketing for the event. I believe in the past there was to ensure the separation of the two events that are going on, that the Bridgeport Growing Better was not able to or agreed not to use the festive lights and the fireworks in part of their marketing. Okay, I mean, that's, that's not something that this council needs to decide on, but um, the, this body, you're, you're saying that Growing Bridgeport together should not be mentioning this other event, um, but that doesn't prevent me or anybody else up on the dais who's not involved with that group that, from posting my it understanding, their hand. My understanding is that in the prior years, there was conversations and agreements between the two events. I don't think it has ever prevented any elected official, to the best of my recollection, and Mr. Truman is certainly aware of the conversations we went on, I believe, as is Mr. Bellow, to prevent either one. I think the question that has always arisen is for the public to understand that they are two separate events being run by two separate groups at I, I don't want to say different purposes because it's not, in essence, in my opinion, but that one event doesn't utilize the other to promote their event. Again, being elected officials, having sat in your seats, um, you're going to talk about what's good for Bridgeport. And at the end of the day, whoever does the events, we've been doing the Festive Lights Committee for over 20 some years. The credit doesn't come to the Festive Lights Committee. It never has and it probably, or I should say it never will, as long as I'm involved. The credit comes to the borough. It's Bridgeport that gets the credit. 
you know. So I think, sir, you know, uh, one of the things that I would say is we, we love the event. Everybody attends. Um, I think in, in this new chapter with everyone, everyone's looking to work together and kind of go towards improving the community. As far as what nonprofits decide separately on your own is completely fine. You can have that discussion with them as far as the council is concerned. Um, we don't mark it either way, I don't think. But if we do decide to, as you said, we're elected right. officials and are allowed to. I, so, I wanted, but I, I appreciate your time and volunteer work and doing. You know, um, and again, we've had, we've yeah, had this we kind of uh, a unwritten agreement, I guess, for a lack of a better word, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, for some yeah, I understand years. and respect that. I so, just think, you know, this is the time in Bridgeport where everybody's coming together for the community, yep. as, as you do and we do, and everybody will continue to do. So I think that, you know, positivity is really what we'd like to reign. Thank you. Um, thank you. Do we have um, any more questions or comments from anyone? Fantastic. Do we have, uh, oh, is that all in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any Aye. opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Once thank again, you thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank for you. Out. I think jolly old elf, Mr. Kohut, is what the man in uh, the man with the beard has. He, he's a jolly old elf, not a ghoul. A jolly old elf. Would you be willing to dye your beard? <laughs> he, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> when you when you need new talent, that's you let me know. Long enough. <laughs> How do you know that's not dye? That might be dye. Thanks for coming out. All right, everyone. Next up we have for council consideration is authorizing to advertise 2024 Borough Street Paving Project. And uh, it, oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, seldom, uh, seldom do I have a thought that really comes into mind, but uh, for, uh, for this one, I just want to, uh, just want to elaborate for, uh, for the audience here and at home uh, watching this later on in the recording. Uh, this is the 2024 Street Paving Roster. Uh, we have Ash, Birch, and Baker and Chestnut Alley, which are all in the uh, the, the Mill Street cor the Mill to Green Street uh, corridor region. Uh, both sides of Borough Line Road, uh, the Ross Road end, and the DeKalb Street end, which are, I'd say, the most significant portion of this year's paving. They're both uh, uh, well over a thousand uh, linear feet uh, from from start to finish. Uh, Fifth Street from Mill to Green is going to get redone because of the uh, utility trench failures that uh, that are already uh, prevalent uh, after uh, it having been uh, repaved uh, eight years ago. Uh, Greenfield Alley, two two significant portions of Greenfield Alley, Coates to Hertz and Grove to Bush. And finally, the Memorial Park parking lot will be getting... Uh, will be getting resurfaced and uh, repaved as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Motion from Ms. Howe, second from Mr. Heil. Do you have any questions or comments from council or the public? And Mr. Truman, this is paid for with CDBG money, uh, community development block grants, and it is actually becoming a bit harder to get those because of the growing economic status on places in the borough, right? Actually, <laughs> um, so to answer the first part of your question, Vice, Vice President Heil, uh, yes, the majority of these street segments are going to be covered using block grant funds. We have a $200,000 block grant that is earmarked for, uh, for most of these. Um, there are some stretches of uh, of, of the some sections of this roster right here, uh, for instance, the Memorial Park parking lot, uh, Borough Line Road on the DeKalb Street side. Uh, I believe those are the, there may be one other one uh, that are actually going to be funded by the borough. Um, however, we we've already in, in the 2024 budget we we appropriated money above and beyond the $200,000 block grant. To get these uh, get these streets uh, addressed, um, yes, the block block grants are, and and what streets and parts of town are eligible for block grants, regardless of the type of project it is. Uh, in our case, obviously, historically, it's been paving streets, are governed by um, the low to moderate income percentage of households that are in uh, each of the boroughs census block groups. Historically, we've had five block groups, which is an inordinate number given how small we are in population and size, but historically, we've had five block groups. Um, and 
every year that the American Community Survey or the census is performed, which are two uh, threshold pieces of uh, you know, eva threshold evaluations that they use to determine and, and glean that census data. Every year, our low to moderate income indexes indices get get lower. When I started here in 2016, all five of our block groups were low to moderate income eligible, uh, and that number is 40 percent. 40 percent of each block group or higher, you qualify for block grant funding. Uh, over the years, that has shriveled to only three of our five block groups being low to moderate income eligible, which while is a fantastic harbinger in terms of the overall economic health of our residents and the community, doesn't help us for block grant funding. However, uh, they just overhauled their methodology in terms of how they evaluate these things. Uh, this year, they have reduced us from having five block groups down to three block groups. Mm -hmm. And the way that they've, uh, you know, uh, drawn the lines or gerrymandered the borough, um, all three block groups now, again, are going to be low to moderate income eligible again moving forward, um, which is fortuitous for future block grant funding. Great question, Mr. Howe. So it's a win-win, that's great. All right, any more comments or questions from council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Next up on the agenda for council consideration, resolution 2024-35, establishing the minimum municipal obligations for the borough's pension plan for 2025. Uh, President Alzayed, if, if I may, uh, real quick, again, to uh, elucidate our audience members. Um, for those who don't know, the MMO is, or minimum municipal obligation, is the amount of money that every municipality must contribute towards their respective pension plans in order to um, keep keep the, the each respective plan Funded to a level that is satisfactory with um, the you know the, the, the state guidelines. Um, I just wanted to show a comparison uh, of our 2024 MMOs or what we will we'll be contributing to um, contributing to our pension plans in 2024 versus what we are uh, on the hook for in 2025. You can see this year we're contributing just a hair over $72,000 towards the police pension plan. Next year that number balloons to 240,000. This year in the non-uniform defined benefit plan we are at 56,500. That number doubles to 112,000 and change. And then the non-uniform defined contribution plan which is a relatively new uh, pension plan um, anybody, anybody hired after 2016 goes into this plan, a non-uniform employee, so we have fewer employees in there overall, so it's a very nominal increase there. But you can see overall, our MMO obligations uh, financially are $152,661 this year. That more than doubles to three seventy eight one eighty dollars next year. Why the stark increase, you might ask. The amount of funding a municipality is required to contribute to pension plans is determined based on what are called actuarial valuations of each respective plan. These are performed on two-year cycles, and Bridgeport's last two actuarial valuations were performed based on our pension health as of January 1st, 21, and January 1st, 23. Between these two dates, calendar year 2022, saw pension plans as well as you know 401ks 457s uh, stock market por stock portfolios plummet across the country take big hits um, and our two largest plans lost a combined two million dollars in, in 2022 which equates to about 17 percent of the overall value of our pension plans um, 
earlier in that year, uh, myself, along with a lot of other managers in Montgomery County, and I'm sure across the country, were, uh, were clutching our pearls even worse than that because we had seen 30% losses in, uh, in the pension plans, just like people saw their stock markets and their personal retirement plans take hits. We fortunately, through the rest of 2022, climbed out of that hole and went from a 30% loss up to a 17% loss, but still significant. Um, in addition to the, ter the, terrible, uh, the terrible hit, the economic downturn of the market in 2022, there are other organic uh, factors such as, you know, the borough has hired more personnel and salaries have continued to increase. Um, so we have the, the reasonable expectation for small gradual increases in the MMO that come with adding personnel and salaries increasing combined with this massive economic downturn in 2022. Um, the effect of an economic downturn isn't felt immediately when it comes to funding pension plans as these valuations build in what is essentially a two-year delay in experiencing their effect due to the valuations only being performed every two years. This large increase in the MMO that we're getting right now uh, in the MMO amounts is a result of the unfunded pension liability that calendar year 2022 is extremely poor market performance created. Um, so that's why we're seeing uh, this, this, this massive jump and, um, you know, if there's any good news or, or light at the end of the tunnel, um, like I said, the actuarial valuations occur every two years. We are going to have one uh, performed again in 2025. Over the last two years, um, we've had not fantastic, but marginally good, better um, market performance uh, year to year. We have continued to recoup some of those losses that we experienced in 2022. So I think we'll see stabilize, stabilized numbers, maybe slightly reduced MMO numbers in the next couple years budget, budget line items. Um, but again, and conversely, it's going to take a, a few years' time for us to dig out of the hole that uh, the, the 2022 stock market um, hit, not only us, but every other municipality with. Uh, um, so there you have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion from Ms. Nolan. Do you have a second? I'll second. Second, Mr. Heil. Do we have any questions or comments from council or the public? And just to, even though it looks like a big number, this is something we can uh, relatively budget in our budget next year, right, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, it's it's something that I want to call to everybody's attention, uh, but it's not uh, you know batting down the hatches, uh, you know, doomsaying. You know, I just uh, it's it's it not a, it's not an insignificant increase. Do you have any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next up for council consideration is the resolution 2024-36, authorizing the purchase of 440 Mill Street, 113 West 5th Street, and 115 West 5th Street. And if I may, President, let me step in again once more. Uh, it's come to my attention that 113 5th Street and 115 West 5th Street, uh, while they are standalone parcels, um, actually are duplicate addresses to a couple of residential properties that sit on the 100 block of 5th Street. When, uh, when, we, when we advertised the agenda late last week, uh, I believe two residents may have thought that their houses were being forcibly bought out. Um, that is not the case. What you're seeing here is the lot, the parking lot that sits behind Wawa. Uh, for those of our longtime residents, this would be the old Camelot parking lot. Um, and we have worked out a, uh, an agreement of sale with Johnson Properties to acquire these four parcels, um, three with their own tax map parcel numbers, um, in order to uh, in, in order to uh, increase the overall uh, property portfolio of the borough. So um, there is no 
planned direct access from this lot that's going to spill out onto Fifth Street. Uh, the means of ingress and egress into this lot will remain as they are currently. Um, and nobody's homes are being uh, eminent domained or condemned or purchased. It's just simply a matter of uh, the county having duplicate addresses on uh, more than one parcel. That should be 440 mil on the slide. I three. just noticed that, yes. It is 440 mil, not 440 depot. We have some Apologies. depot street residents here. I think they were getting a little weirded out. We ain't buying anything on 440 depot either. You know, this whole town turned upside down since those monsters showed up. <laughs> All right, do we have a motion? So moved. Motion from Mr. Shank, do we have a second? Second. Second from Ms. High. Do we have any questions or comments from council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries, thank you. All right, next up on the agenda for council consideration, authorizing repair of WWT secondary, TP secondary trickling filter number one by municipal maintenance for $152,000, $250. Uh, $152,250. Mr. Chairman, do you have any other thoughts about this? Or? Do. Okay. Just All right. Um, members of council, the uh, earlier this year, it was, uh, it was observed by our wastewater treatment plant staff that our secondary trickling filter number one um, was had sprung a leak, uh, was uh, hemorrhaging water through a hole that uh, previously a hole had not been in that location. Um, we have been acquiring uh, cost estimates on the rebuild of this trickling filter over the last several months, uh, and in your packets you will see three estimates. Uh, there is one in the amount of $173,548, uh, and then there's an additional charge of about 13,000 on top of that, so when it's all said and done, that quote would come in at about 186 or 187,000. Uh, that's from A.C. Schultz. There is another quote from GMH Associates of America that quote came in at $186,153, uh, which leaves the third quote uh, from Municipal Maintenance Company uh, at $152,250. Uh, this is CoStar's approved contracted pricing, uh, which um, allows us to circumvent the competitive bidding process. Uh, but still being safe and secure in the knowledge that this is a, a state uh, curated uh, contract and that the, uh, the best possible price is being uh, afforded to us. Um, so um, if it would please council, uh, we should move forward with repairing this uh, trickling filter and the quote from municipal maintenance is in fact the, uh, the lowest responsible estimate we've received. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion from Ms. Nolan. Do we have a second? I'll second. Fix that sewer. Keep it running. <laughs> second from Ms. High. Do you have any questions or comments from council or the public? And just to be sure, even though it's the lowest amount, you're still comfortable with the work they do and it's safe and will be effective. Municipal maintenance is a, um, they, have, they have worked for the borough several times in the past on similar projects, and yes, we can, uh, we can speak to the quality of their work. Yes, sir. Any additional comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. All right, for council consideration, uh, authorizing the purchase of an LED message board from Pizzico signs for 44,000, 40, for 44,161.50. I will again uh, step in, Presidente. Um, members of council, members of the audience, you 
a few years back, we were uh, lucky enough to obtain a $50,000 Keystone Communities Grant, uh, which is a funding program through the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. Um, the authorized uh, piece of equipment that we were that were approved to utilize uh, that grant for is the purchase of a new uh, LED sign message board uh, that will be uh, that will be installed out front of Bro Hall, um, and the, the the quote from Pitsico Signs. You know, Pitsico Signs is the um, consultant that we worked with to uh, to develop the specs on this and and what would work given our size and how uh, proximity to the road, uh, what we're looking for in terms of the messages we can disseminate to the public, um, and again like the previous uh, action item with the uh, trickling filter, Pizzico Signs is a CoStar's approved vendor. So uh, we can um, feel confident in the fact that the, the cost that's being uh, estimated here uh, is monitored and approved through a uh, state procured contracting system. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion from Ms. Howe, do you have a second? Second. Second from Ms. Gundrum. Do you have any questions or comments from Council or the public? What's the plan to utilize on this sign just for like community events, um, time, temperature, stuff like that? I mean, yeah, the, the same the same thing that you the same thing you see in front of uh, you know other municipal buildings or libraries or town halls that you you know time, temperature, um, detours, weather emergencies, community events, the same same stuff that we uh, we push out on the website and social media. That's fun. Yeah, it's really great to have other other ways to communicate with our residents. Sorry, I'm sorry. Do we have a timeline on when we might see this sign up and running? Not at this juncture, uh, Councilwoman High, but I know the contractor is eager to move forward, and um, we've been sitting on this grant for a couple years, so I'd like to get it off my plate as well. Awesome. Keep us posted. All right. Any additional comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And when I and when I say just for clarification, when I say sitting on the grant, it doesn't mean we've been irresponsible or dilatory with it. <laughs> it's just been if it if it hasn't been one thing, it's been another. That's 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 uh, kept us from proceeding. We are now at the point where we can proceed. Thanks for the clarification, Mr. Chairman. All right, our final item on the agenda is uh, for council consideration. We have a funding request from the Montgomery County Public Library. Is Ms. D'Angelo here? Please come forward, Karen. Welcome. I, I, There are currently 903 Bridgeport residents with library cards that are active right now. And we have been coming to lots of your events. You'll see that we're going to be here on Friday. And we thank you very much for your support. And just as a teaser, the county owns our building and they have approved a full renovation of the building. We're going to be moving out for three to five years. We're going to be going over to Logan Commerce Center where the DMV is on Berkeley. We're going to be there um, sometime early next year, and we'll be there for three to five years. And it's going to be really exciting, and I can't wait till I can actually tell you anything about it, but I can't. <laughs> I like that. Thank you for your Thank comments. You, Karen. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's that's really the, that's a, that's a, an impressive statistic that twenty percent of our population has a uh, eighteen percent, but close enough for government work. Uh, um, 20% of our population has a, a library card. Uh, members of council, in, in the, um, along with the information 
that uh, that Ms. D'Angelo uh, provided. There is the uh, the annual uh, obligatory letter that um, uh, that the, the, the county library system sends us. Um, they would be seeking. Uh, we generally provide a donation of five hundred dollars to the Montgomery County Library System, and uh, they are seeking uh, inclusion of that in the 2025 budget uh, by uh, appearing at tonight's meeting as well. Randy, do we have a motion? So is this motion to put it in the budget or to approve the funding now? Uh, no, the, uh, this, is, this would be to approve the funding for cal 2025 budget or calendar year 2025. Well, I'll make the motion to approve the 2025. Motion from Mr. Heil, do you have a second? I'll, I'll second. Second from Ms. Heil, do you have any questions or comments from Council or the public? I do. Good. Sorry. Over here. Sorry. Um, as somebody who works within the library district here in Montgomery County, um, I will say just as a heads up, I know that uh, Ms. D'Angelo uh, noted in her letter to Council that she would be hopefully asking for more in coming years. Um, as, as somebody who runs programs for my library regularly, $500 um, gets you one really nice party. And if we have at least 20% of Bridgeport residents with the library card, which we should strive for 100%, um, it <laughs> provides a lot of great resources that are absolutely free. Um, so it's kind of a no-brainer. But uh, if we're get, getting that kind of support from our county level, because they are our county library, um, we, we should probably support them a little more, um, just as a suggestion for the future, because it'll, it, I, I don't know the specific statistic, was it like three or four dollars uh, gets made by every dollar invested in the library? So it's an investment in our community and those surrounding us, and so. And we're required as by state law to set $5 per capita employee, correct? We're already putting in $5 per person um, so might as well just keep putting more on there if we have the means to in the future. I, I would be in favor if the request comes in for more money, so please uh, ask for that, especially if you can justify it and say here's the reason why. I think it's an easy justification. Like you said, 20% with library cards, that's four people in my house have library cards, at least three. Um, so those are rookie numbers, you gotta pump those up, as I would say. <laughs> I think that people often forget that libraries aren't just for books. There's so many other great um, programs that come out of libraries. I know that some of them offer free you know, tickets to the zoo, um, discount tickets to other places. Um, so I think that utilizing them and you know supporting them is very important. Do you have any additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. All righty. We can move on to unfinished business. Do we have any items of unfinished business? Given there are none, we can move on to committee reports. Are there any committee reports? I have one. Uh, the events committee met last night here at Borough Hall, uh, and we discussed, uh, well, first of all, movie night, which will be next Saturday, the 21st. Keith, can you remind me what the movie will be? Transformers, colon, Ooh. Rise of the Beasts. Excellent, thank you. So we'll be starting that up at sunset. Um, and then also we discussed the Bridgeport 5K coming up on October 5th. Uh, and signups are open now, so I encourage everyone to come test your skills on our hills. Um, and yeah, just check out our website or uh, Facebook for um, sign up information. And I hope I see everyone there. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any other committee reports? I know I have one for the Halloween um, subcommittee. So the Bridgeport Borough Halloween subcommittee and the Elks Lodge have come together to, as you have seen today, bring you Booport. Um, so for the month of October, what we have decided to do is support local business, support our community, and come together and kind of celebrate something that's always been special in Bridgeport and kind of introduce it to the world in a bigger way. Um, one, to encourage res residents and non-residents to patronize our local businesses, but also to just bring some fun to the community. So um, we have a volunteer group of about 15 people that show up 
graciously and loyally um, month after month painting and building and knocking on doors and calling people. Um, I do want to thank all of them, including the Elks Lodge, for working with us um, so graciously. I do want to kind of mention a couple of key dates um, that we have. We have about 42 events planned for the month of October, so quite a bit. Um, we have a website called booportpa.com that we will be updating um, in the coming days that you can go on there, um, register. There's a form to get contacted um, where we'll send you all the flyers, but there's also an event page where you can literally go on and take a look at everything that's happening that day. Um, and the, some of the key items, I think, are the parade. We have a parade that's going to go up from the school um, down to Ford Street, down Mill Street, down to the borough, um, where it will end with a big party. There's going to be magicians and face painting and a big vendor fair. Um, kind of, you think it, we have it. Uh, we've kind of done it all, and we're really excited to share it with you all. Um, so, yeah, thank you to all the, the, the local businesses that have been supporting us, our local police and fire um, departments for just doing a great job collaborating, and our staff. Um, it's been quite a, quite a lot of work to put this together, but we're really excited that it's coming up. So um, if, you, if you'd like to check out the website, uh, find us on Facebook, and if you need anything, contact me. I'm happy to kind of give you some more information about it, um, but I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and again, thanks to everyone that for uh, collaborating and kind of working through this year with us. And that's my committee report. All right. If there's no additional committee reports, we can move on to the mayor's report. Mayor Jack's here. Hey, thank you. Um, at the end of August, I was lucky enough to receive a tour from Activities Coordinator Jill at the Montco SAC, which is the Montgomery County Senior Adult Activity Center right over in Norristown. Uh, this activity center is a bustling community of Montgomery County residents who are 50 years old or older. And it's clearly a place that allows you to build relationship with your neighbors, enjoy a free morning of stimulating programming such as art classes, music jam sessions, exercise classes, and more. And really inexpensive lunches catered to all ages, even for children. Uh, I think it's over 60 is $2 for a lunch. And uh, if you're younger than 60, it, uh, it doubles, unfortunately, to $4. So. Yeah, um, might break the bank, but if you're looking for a good place for a community, inexpensive food, like I said, that's your place. Um, and if you or your loved one is looking to build community, definitely stop by to see all they have to offer. They're located over on George Street, which is really an easy ride over the bridge if you're interested in checking them out. And as Ms. D'Angelo noted, uh, Norris Town Library will be here on Friday, um, our community game night is coming up, that would be September 13th at 6 p.m. right here at Borough Hall. Um, the library is gonna be showing up with a full selection of games for all ages, and Family Services of Montgomery County will be providing free pizza for dinner. So uh, don't miss out on the fun. Our last one was uh, very fun, which is why we're doing it again. And finally, my monthly office hours will be taking place on Wednesday, September 25th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. in my office on the first floor of Borough Hall. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Jacks here. Next up, we have a chief support. Good evening, Bridgeport. Uh, some of our direct and enforcement um, specific locations that uh, we have some issues with. I appreciate people calling in, reporting, or uh, using Facebook. Uh, sometimes people think they're not listened to or heard, and they are, and I'll reply back. So the 900 block of Bush Street will be around Bridgeport Elementary School. We urge all of the parents to follow the rules for the safety of the children. Use the appropriate uh, vehicle circles to drop off your children so that they, we know that they get off right to a sidewalk, uh, whether front or rear. Uh, we don't want children crossing mid-block across streets um, that could endanger them. So I'll have officers spending a little bit more attention. Um, normally we're on Ford Street to slow people down, but we're going to spend some time right in front of the school to remind um, our adults um, to be a little bit more cautious with the vehicles. Uh, there's been some reports in the region of package thefts um, and cyber scams. Um, just in general, package theft, if you can track them through UPS or whatever else, track them. Um, you know about when they're going to be delivered on a date. Call your neighbors, talk to your neighbors, um, have it delivered to your neighbor's house, uh, or have somebody looking out for your package. Um, we haven't had a tremendous amount of them, but, uh, but uh, they do happen, and that's a good thing to get ahead of and cyber scams. 
Um, there's a, a whole litany of different um, schemes that are out there, um, but we ask you to, when you, when you look in your email, um, uh, if uh, a bank is gonna call you, they're, they're going to send something through, through regular mail. Um, they're not gonna ask you for different information if they already have it. So just be wary with anything on a telephone. If you did not initiate the contact, you can always hang up and initiate the contact or reinitiate the contact with somebody that you know at your banking institutions. Um, that being said, um, with all of the uh, the boot port, maybe there could be a bridge miss or or a Chris port. Uh, just just a thought. Um, a couple events coming up. Uh, a very large event, the hundredth anniversary. 100th anniversary gala of the St. Peter's and Paul Ukrainian Catholic Church with Father Ron um, between Sunday between 11.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. We will have uh, parking restrictions in place on Union Avenue and on her streets to ensure that all of the folks that need to come and go uh, will be a little bit more safer. We're gonna have fire police out and a couple extra police officers there. There should be between five and 600 uh, people out around there parking. If you do live on Union, um, closest to the church, we will have parking restrictions uh, about 6 p.m. Um, after Friday. Um, just reminding people that on that on Sunday morning um, we will need the cards. They'll have to be out of there um, that stretch of Union Avenue. So th just be be aware of that. Bridgeport Vet is having their event between 3 and 6 p.m. Um, so for those people that wish. Uh, off of uh, West 4th and DeKalb. They always put on a great event. Um, so they'll be, they'll be out there. We're not closing Green Street this year, uh, but there is additional traffic. So please be wary when you're doing your travels on both Sunday, on both Union, Hearst, 4th and DeKalb streets. That's all I have for you. Thank you, Chief. All right, we can move on to new business. Are there any items of new business anyone would like to discuss? Given there's none, open forum announcements. Are there any announcements today? All right, we can move on to public comment. Are there any members of the public that would like to comment? Great. We can definitely entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. All right, everyone, it is 8.33 and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, everyone.